You know, I've lost friends or pseudo friends, Facebook associates, been shunned by relatives. When speaking about this very sensitive topic of who is Jesus, people get upset when the very similitude of Jesus is questioned. Be that as it may, I have a duty to speak for truth. The purpose of many of my articles is to expose fabrications and present the facts. As Jordan Maxwell states, the more you educate yourself, the more you understand where things come from, the more obvious things become, and you begin to see lies everywhere. How many times has this question been asked? Who is Jesus? Is Jesus the man the Christian holy book says he is? He's not listed in the history books like Gandhi or Mother Teresa, Plato, Socrates, Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, etc. However, he's mentioned quite often in biblical history and religious folklore. Asking the question, is Jesus the man the Bible says he is, is not about debating the veracity of his existence. The question is broached because if Jesus is the man the Bible says he is, then why all the contradictions, the double speak, the intimidation regarding what will happen to non-believers at the time of their physical demise? And keep in mind, if we're pure energy, energy does not burn and energy cannot be destroyed Energy moves into form, through form, and out of form, and the cycle is repeated, uh, very similar to the cycles of water, carbon, and nitrogen. Now, the Bible clearly states that non-believers will be severely punished, eternally severely punished. Now, how can such a severe, eternal, everlasting chastisement occur when you look at the characteristics or the supposed characteristics of such a great man, such an enlightened spiritual being as Jesus is purported to be. Now another puzzling question that comes to mind is, if in our purest state, again, if we are energy, what good would be the gnashing of teeth? which is sort of like an animal's bite into its prey. What good is a scorpion's bite? All of the things that are supposed to happen to a soul that goes to this place called hell. How does this eternal pain actually come into play? If you're energy. Now let's look at some of the characteristics of Yeshua or Jesus, whatever you want to call him. Christ, or Christos, is actually a title. So we know that would not have been his actual name. Okay, some of the characteristics are brave, compassionate, God incarnate, great teacher, honest, kind, loyal, loving, powerful, redeemer, savior, sincere. So you have all these grandiose qualities Yet there is a severe afterlife awaiting those who do not believe in the existence of this particular entity or deity. Now why would such a, a, a person, a deity, actually care whether or not we believed that he lived? Now shouldn't such an exalted figure be more interested in the quality of life more so than the beliefs of an individual. Wouldn't God incarnate or God in the flesh be more concerned with whether we helped our fellow human beings than if we gave 10% of our income to the church? Certainly the intelligent presence in the universe that we so haphazardly referred to as God 
doesn't need our 10%. Now for the sake of argument, let's say Jesus is the central character in the Christian holy book. So as the story goes, Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. So, so what about Horace? Horace was born on December 25th, around 3000 BC. That would be 3000 years before the birth of, quote, Christ, unquote. Horace was born on December 25th, 3000 BC, to the Virgin Isis. Horace was dead for three days, resurrected, and ascended into heaven. What about Addis? Addis was born on December 25th, around 1200 BC, to the Virgin Nana. Addis was dead for three days, resurrected, and ascended into heaven. Then we have Mithras of Persia, 1200 BC was worshipped by Roman soldiers, was born in a stable on, you guessed it, December 25th. Mithras also performed miracles, had 12 disciples, and was known as the truth and the light. Dionysus of Greece, born somewhere around 500 BC. He was a traveling teacher, turned water into wine, was known as God's only begotten son, Alpha and Omega. Sound familiar? Dead for three days, resurrected, and ascended into heaven. Now there are several more deities who all descended from heaven, assumed the form of men. Uh, coincidentally, there are no female saviors of humankind are recorded, which is a bit odd, but that's beside the point. So these deities descended from heaven, assumed the form of man, and their stories provide unequivocal evidence of a divine origin, fantastic works, miracles, and supreme virtues. And, and keep in mind, the majority, all of these stories actually, were told centuries and even millennia before the Christian version, before the Jesus version. I mean, there's so many others. There's Adad of Assyria. There's Addis of Phrygia. Phrygia. There's Cadmus of Greece. Uh, there's, there's Indra of Tibet. There's Prometheus of Caucasus. Thamus of Syria, Thor, son of Odin, of the Gauls. There's a universal monarch of the civils, all with similar stories, and the list goes on. So, don't shoot the messenger. I didn't make any of this up. If you do the research, outside of the various holy books, because they're trying to push you in one direction or the other, you will find the same information. You can ignore it all you want, but if the same story was told hundreds of times before the so-called original version, there's definitely a fly in the ointment. <laughs>